Darby. Thank you very much, Darby, for sending in these pictures. This is a lovely photo from the side. We can see the rider. Am I showing it? Yes. Uh, before, and if you have a question, comment about what we're discussing, please feel free to put it in the comments here. We'd love to hear what your comments and questions are and um, like some interaction here. All right, Jay. So this is Darby. Looks like she's schooling at home. Um, okay. So the, before we get to her position, I do want to point out one I notice thing. there's a jump cup there on that standard without a rail in it. That's, you know, that's a safety hazard. Yeah, right there. Um, you got to be careful with that sort of thing because if your horse was to something unusual was to happen, that even looks like a metal cup. Um, yes. Okay, so, so just a second. I'm going to go back to this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just thought there was perfect. So, just from a safety perspective, please take those off. Um, it's very, very rare that anything could happen, but things can happen. And um, so, please remove the cups if you're not if you're not using them. Um, but let's get to her position because there's a lot to like here. Um, there's no question about it. Um, her, her. Well, again, we'll start at the top. Her eye is perfect. Love that. She does have, you know, her shoulder is definitely, compared to say the last rider, is up a lot taller. Her, her back looks in, in pretty good position. And, and you gotta watch that you, you're not looking for too flat of a back at the, at the jump, because I know that's really emphasized in the equitation ring, but horses don't jump jumps in a flat bascule. They jump them with a round bascule. You know, obviously, the horse obviously is shape is more like so this. So bascule, you know, just, to, just to back up the bus there a bit, Jay, and just bascule to make sure everybody understands what the bascule is. Well, that's the shape of the horse's body, essentially from the front of the horse to the back of the horse. Oh. Yeah, the total shape. So there's there's always a round. You ideally you want roundness through that top line. The more roundness through the top line, generally the better the jump. So I like where her back is now. If uh, going back to the elbow to the hand to the bit here, we see it's a yeah, a little bit broken. Um, I, I'd like to definitely see with this rider, I'd like to see the elbow more forward. I'd like to see the elbow more in, and I'd like to see the hand more towards the horse's bit. Um, so like here? Doing here, yeah, there you, yeah, there you go. Because then that, now that angle is going to change. So what she's executing here is a crest release, which is a correct release. I mean, we, we've talked before on the shows about the different types of releases and a crest release is one of the cor correct three ways to do it. For me, I'd like to see the hand lower so it's more of an automatic release that follows more towards the bit. That's gonna change that elbow angle and then the position is gonna be really good. So yeah, so just like you're illustrating there, I like that. And then if we go down, her hips look good. She's, I don't know, maybe she's out of the saddle, you know, one centimeter too much, but. <laughs> she's very, like, she's built to ride. I mean, beautiful, uh, con her confirmation for riding. She's got lovely long leg. Yeah, like you say, maybe she's out of the saddle a little bit, but. No, but I mean, maybe, <laughs> it's hard to say. The knee looks good. The lower leg looks great. The position, the the angle there on the ankle is good on the toe where the leg is. So I, I like everything about this other than, like I said, I would just, I'd lower that hand a little more, bring the elbow in a little more, bring the elbow a little more forward. And uh, then I would say it's, it's a lovely picture. So what do you think of her stirrup length? Like, do you think your stirrups are a good length? I think for that height of jump, I mean, you could say they're maybe they're a touch long, but I don't think so. No. Um, again, it is difficult to tell with with these sort of things, but I wouldn't say it's definitely too long. They're certainly not too short. Right. Um, if if anything, yeah. it might be one hole long for jumping. They maybe yeah. they're set at her flat length. Yeah. Um, so she could be at flat length with her jump with her stirrups there. And so you could go one hole shorter and I think that would be okay. And uh, to me, she looks, it looks lovely and balanced. She's not interfering with the horse. She looks really kind and everything, but she looks quite tense to me. Like she needs to take a deep breath and just kind of relax and feel what the horse is doing. It looks like she is uh, a bit mechanical maybe. 
I, I think she knew she was going to be on your show and that oh. you were taking a position, so she's posting. <laughs> I'm guessing that's probably what it is. Um, it could be. Again, it's so hard to tell with a snapshot. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely see what you're saying. No yeah. question about that. But So, I mean, she looks like a competent, lovely rider. She's kind and soft and thinking about the horse. At least that's what I see. Looks like she, to me, needs to take a deep breath and relax and kind of sink sink down a little bit more. I mean, and, and we're talking, you know, little things. For yeah. this rider at this level, I think she's great. Well, and, and little things, I mean, if you want to talk about little things, I'd definitely put her hair up. That would be better. Yeah. Uh, if she didn't have her hair up, um, it should be in a braid, you know, just to, to clean it up a little bit. You know, she's wearing Carlanti boots, but they're a little dirty. You know, I mean, you could you could clean that part of it all up. Um, Gloves? And she's wearing Cavalier Toscano britches, so she's well-dressed. Um, How do you know baby. that? What type of boots and breeches she has on? Uh, well, by the logo. Yeah, you can tell. And then could be wearing gloves. Um, yeah. I don't know. Myself as a rider, I think gloves are important in the equitation. Myself as a rider, I prefer not wearing gloves. So I, I don't, I'm not going to criticize somebody for doing something I didn't do much. So. Awesome. And if she did, if she had gloves on, we might not have seen her hands so nicely either. Well, honestly, in equitation classes, um, riders should wear bright white or bright pink gloves to, so the judges could see their see their how, hands. How um, lovely their hands are! You know that oh. actually, and as as a coach, you you I mean, black gloves obviously look by far the best, but um, you're not able to see the angles as much. If we're looking at her hands, um, her angle is perfect um, as far as the you know you want to have that thumbs up but slightly towards one another and so you know it is it is nice to see actually without the gloves her angle on her hand is is ideal nice photo though isn't it okay so uh this is darby and she's sending another one this is the same person i think a little uh a year ago i think she said well she's improved a lot That's for sure. I mean, yeah. It, the it, same it, thing it, here, right? This is the one I was thinking of. Oh, uh, okay. Well, at least those ones are underneath the rail. So that's a little, that's, you know, um, I agree, but a little bit yeah. safe. Yes. If you're not using the cups, please take them off the standards for safety's sake. Um, yeah. Hard to even tell that is the same rider. Um, you know, no question. She's there. Uh, the balance is much, much different. Um, you can see how closed over she is with her body. Her hand is actually not even near the neck. It's, it's above the neck and not. She's, yeah. What's happening with a jump like this is the rider's body is closing and the hand is coming up. It's what's happening. So that's a significant difference there. Um, the leg, again, you can see some similarities there, but it's definitely the angle is not as good as in the front picture. So she's obviously worked hard over the past year and improved uh, improved a lot with her position for those two pictures. So well done. Did we talk about what we could do with this rider? Well, um, no, we did not. So I think that, and, and you can see a little bit with both is I'd like to see, again, talking about the hand, I'd like to see that hand. You know, for riders, don't be afraid to use the horse's neck to help you balance a little bit. Um, ideally, in the end game, you, you don't want to balance on the horse's neck. But when you're learning, um, it's okay to do that with your hand. Um, and once you have your hand really established in the correct position, then you can work on not balancing, but it is important. So what I'd like to see here with her is, is I'd tell her, you know, to press her knuckles into the neckline a lot firmer. You can definitely see that. You can see it a little bit here, not so, but it's harder to tell. On the other picture, you can definitely tell that. Um, and just kind of create that, use that neck muscle, because the neck is essentially just two big muscles. So you can push all you want, especially if you're a, a tiny lady like this one here. You're not, you're not gonna affect them by pushing into their neck very hard. So, so push into the neck, use that position to help you. 
to hold to hold that body. See, you can see you're just lifting a little bit at the jump and then crouching. So um, again, I would practice, you know, we talked about the gymnastic earlier. So if we look at a different way, let's say you'd have a, a line of, of jumps that were say four strides apart um, and you could canter them. And again, you'd set the four strides at a comfortable distance. Um, this looks like quite a small horse and these are smaller jumps. So with say this horse, for example, you know, set those distances at about 57 feet um, at four strides so that the distance is very comfortable for the horse. And then again, get the rider into their two point or the half seat, whichever you prefer. They're both, they're both correct. And then work on at the jump, pressing into the neck firmly with the knuckles and staying there from takeoff through landing. Um, my, well, for sure, this rider is not going to be supporting the release into the landing of the jump. They're coming, the hand's going to be coming up and back. So really work on staying across that. And then... Well, you're saying to keep your hands pressed into the neck when you land. Very, very important to do that. It's one of the biggest mistakes that is made in riding. So that people bring their upper body back too soon. And then they, because they're 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 not independent that they lift their hands off the neck Is yeah it, it starts off with most riders closing too early and then as they close early then the horse is now coming up with their arc and then that pushes the riders rider back into the landing as the horse is coming down that's that's one of one of the hardest things about jumping is to stay tall on the land and the takeoff and then finish into the landing with the body that's so it's it's kind of a domino effect then. So if you, if you if you kind of if you do this uh, leaning too far forward and get too far ahead of the horse, then that's going to to yeah, make you the, the rider's body is coming down, and then the horse's body is coming up. Yeah. Then as they're coming into the landing, the horse is coming down and the rider's coming back the other way. Yeah. So, so they're a little bit behind the horse on yeah, the landing. So what I would suggest say as an exercise is that with the four strides and then what you could do is make the in just a very small jump and then the out you could work on becoming an oxer and and get that oxer a little wider and making the rider stay with the hand keeping the body still and tall but making sure the hand stays closed into the landing and often with riders I will put a marker one stride or sometimes even two strides after the jump and say hold your release till you get to this marker um, i'd say you know 90 percent of of learning riders return too early with their hand um at least 90 percent and so i'll put a marker at one or two strides after the jump and say hold your release until you get to this marker so that it very important finish the jump and it's very key to finish the jump with with a soft hand Right. Yeah. So I, I've seen that a lot as well is that riders, uh, think they're finished their jump before they even land on the ground and lift their hands up. So the horse, when they land often try to get away from the contact. So they become inverted on the landing rather than continue finishing their jump. So, um, would you use a neck strap or a the martingale strap of a martingale to help keep your hands still on the neck um absolutely when you're first starting out definitely um you're putting a strap in the neck and making sure your hand stays there you, you never want to pull on your horse's mouth in the air of the jump that's really key so um definitely a strap on the neck is helpful um but then watch you don't get relying on it i think yeah. that I think it's a good skill to learn to hold the mane, actually. Um, and, you know, people, there's a real stigma about that, about, oh, I can't hold the mane, that means I'm not a good rider. Um, <laughs> Hap, Han Hap Hansen from California, who's won over 100 Grand Prix, uh, he regularly held the mane. Um, and so it, it's really not a, not a bad thing. And it's a good thing to practice holding the mane when you get in trouble because sometimes the horse will leave when you're not expecting them to leave the ground. You know, maybe your eye is a little off or something like that. And the best thing you can do is like, oh, I'm in trouble, just grab the mane. So yeah, I, I think the strap is a good idea, but I would use it 
only at the very beginning because I'd really like the riders to just get that instinct of, oh, okay, I got to stay with the horse. I'm going to grab the mane, and that's to me a very undertaught skill. Um, I know I was taught that as a little kid. Just look, you know, if you're in trouble, grab, grab mane. mane. And I just I don't see it, and it's almost like this negative stigma about grabbing the mane and. To me, it's a much more negative stigma to floss your horse's teeth in the air of the jump with a, with a bitch than it is to grab some mane. Up. So that I would I would go that route even more so than the strap on the neck, just to create that instinct in the rider, like, okay, I got to stay here. And then, of course, as your position gets better, you don't need to grab the mane, but yeah. they're going to have that occasional jump when it's it's nice to hang on. I think I think sometimes yeah. putting putting something around like a, 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 a neck strap or the strap of the martingale to hold on to just to show the riders how much they are bringing lifting their ha hands off the neck because sometimes they say okay yeah, yeah i can do that but then they have to let it go because they realize that they are bringing their hands up absolutely yeah no no i love that idea Anything you can do to create softness with the hand in the air of the jump is, is a positive for the, the rider and which makes it very much a positive for the horse. Um, on my show, on the J-Dig show, um, it, most important thing to me, of course, is the horses. So um, ride safely and always respect the horse. Yes, there we go. Now go use this stuff. Go hug your horse. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks now. Take care.